Next week, the government will start administering booster shots to a specific group of eligible people, mostly residents of long-term care homes who received some of the first vaccine and those who are severely immunocompromised. That said, there are still a lot of questions about vaccines and the best thing we can do is check in with an expert. Allison Kelvin is a virologist at the Vaccine and Infectious Disease Organization, or VITO, in Saskatoon. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. So you're a member of the World Health Organization's committee on the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine design. As we get more and more data about how the vaccines are working in the population, what's the biggest standout? Uh, that's right. We've been looking at the vaccines uh, since their development. And one of the biggest standouts um, to me is that there was such a high effectiveness for the mRNA vaccines in their initial clinical trials and throughout the first couple of months of usage of the vaccine. Typically, when we design vaccines for a respiratory virus, you know, we're aiming for 50, 60, 70 percent. So this was a lot more than what we were typically used to for this type of virus. When it comes to breakthrough cases, people who are fully vaccinated but do end up in hospital, why does that happen? Yeah, so I think, you know, related to what we were talking about, having such high effectiveness, we're used to having something a bit lower for breakthrough infections, but um, these breakthrough infections are actually of more mild disease. So the vaccine is more protecting against disease than infection. As we're getting more and more people vaccinated, I do expect this effectiveness to decrease, not in how severe the disease is, in someone who is vaccinated and infected, I still expect that to stay around 90, 95%, uh, keeping people out of hospitals. But I do expect the effectiveness, um, so people actually getting infected, to decrease. And this is because um, you actually have a different immune system in your upper respiratory tract, in your nose, than you do in your lungs. So we know that when you get a needle in your arm, that induces protection that is greater in your lungs. So you're not going to have such severe disease if you get infected because your lungs aren't going to be destroyed. Whereas in your upper respiratory tract, it's harder to protect from infection up here through a needle that you get in your arm. So I do expect to have some infection here, but not as much here. And that's really why we're having, what we're seeing with these breakthrough infections, less severe disease because the virus isn't infecting in the lower respiratory tract. Lots of conversations around booster shots as it's been happening in places like the United States for a while. When should people start considering getting a booster shot? Yeah, I think that really depends on your unique medical status. Um, we know that people who are immunocompromised, possibly people who are older, might not have as beneficial response to the two, do the two traditional doses of the COVID-19 vaccines. And what we're seeing is that there is data supporting a third dose of COVID-19 vaccination in people who are immunocompromised, and this might boost their overall protection. For the general public, I think we don't have enough data right now to determine if a third booster shot at this time is really going to add to protection. How is getting a booster shot different from, say, getting an annual flu shot? Yeah, so these are two totally different viruses. Uh, right now we're in a pandemic, whereas the typical influenza virus is more seasonal. So we have to get a seasonal shot to protect us through the winter. Uh, right now we we're having infections basically all throughout our year. So we wanna look at what our immune response is doing, how long our immune response lasts after vaccination to really determine when our next shot should be given. And all that said, we are entering this fourth wave. How does the Delta variant play into all of this when it comes to vaccines? Yeah, so we know that there are slight differences between the virus that the vaccine was modeled after and the Delta variant. But compared to other variants, such as the beta variant that came out of South Africa, there's actually, great, actually greater protection from the vaccine against the Delta variant than the beta variant. So um, even though there's slight differences in effectiveness um, for the Delta variant, I still expect 
the original vaccine to, pre, to be protective against Delta and severe disease caused by infection of the Delta variant. I always learn so much when we talk. Thanks so much for this, Allison. Yeah, thank you for having me. Allison Kelvin is a virologist at Vito in Saskatoon.